Hello, so today I just want to do a really brief tutorial on the Phoenix tool in Borderland Genetics. And I say really brief because the tool itself is not particularly difficult to use. Um, however, uh, it's not a very descriptive name, I'll admit. So it's not necessarily clear to you what the Phoenix tool does, uh, why you would use it, and you know what, what the input and output of this tool is. In ancient Greek folklore, a phoenix is a long-lived bird that cyclically obtains new life by arising from the ashes of its predecessor. So let me explain that very briefly. Uh, the first uh, input, well, the input is, the, is a child donor. And when I say a child donor, I don't necessarily mean that it's actually a physical child. Uh, the child can be uh, the DNA from a 90-year-old. It could be a reconstructed kit for, um, for someone who lived 300 years ago. What's important is that it's the child with respect to the target that we are trying to reconstruct. So what we're going to use this tool for is to reconstruct a kit, a partial DNA reconstruction, for one of the parents of that child donor. And we're going to feed it the raw DNA of uh, the child donor, as well as we're going to tell it which of the child's, uh, the user is going to have to tell it which of the child's matches are paternal. It'll, you have to select them from a list, and then what it proceeds to do is just find all of the matching segments between the child and these paternal relatives. It aggregates them together into a single mono DNA kit, uh, and it will, as output, provide a partial reconstruction of the father based on the assumption that those segments you share, or the child shares, with these maternal paternal relatives uh, are shared due to inheritance from the father of that child, uh, or vice versa, because we could use this uh, to reconstruct a mother just in exactly the same way. Uh, only thing is we would select all the maternal relatives, and we, ha we it have to be maternal only. You can't pick relatives for this tool that are related on both sides of the family uh, relative to this child. So you pick all the maternal relatives that you could see in the list, and then it will spit out a kit that represents the mother of this child, and it'll be a partial uh, phased reconstructed kit. And you could use the output from these uh, kits in the exact same ways that you would use any other DNA kit on the site. Uh, they will yield matches, they, and uh, they will show up in other people's matches lists, which is nice, because I mean, one of the nice things about Borland Genetics is that you go look in your match list, and it's not gonna be you know a, a whole bunch of private, private, private with no trees. It's going to be people that you could, you know, that may have lived a hundred years ago that you could look up in, you know, in a census if, if you're in a country that has a census or in other historical records. Uh, so it's nice to have in your match list people that you're related to that you can, you know, take home and do some homework on and find out how you're related. You could look up their, their history and whatever records are available in the, the countries where, or the regions where these individuals lived. Okay, so let's get started. Let's log in and we are going to uh, create a Phoenix kit uh, for my paternal grandmother. And let's go to tools. This is at the top. You got home settings, messages, tools, terms of service, and sign out. We want to go to the tools tab. And this page, I, I admit, it, it's kind of uh, crowded right now. Uh, and I want to keep that information up here because a lot of it is for people who use the desktop tools before uh, and you know want to know where things are relative to that. But I'm probably going to hide some of this stuff and maybe you have to click on to see some of this so that this section here, the special phase scripts uh, and some of the other links on the site are really in large print and maybe some better descriptions of what they do. Uh, but for now, this is the way the tools tab looks. And let's click on Phoenix under the special phase scripts. And that's where we're going to find the Phoenix tool. Okay, so this uh, has some very brief instructions. And they just basically reflect what I already said uh, in the intro to this video. The tool partially reconstructs a parent of a selected child donor by extracting shared DNA from family members on the same side of the family as the target parent. So for the target for, I'm sorry, for the child donor, that's who we got to select first. So the first step is to select the donor profile that represents the child to which, to, to which you wish to apply the Phoenix tool. So I'm going to select the kit that we created for my father uh, in a previous video when I was demoing the missing parent tool. 
So let's click continue. And what we're doing here is we're selecting his donor profile. On the next screen, it's going to ask us to select which kit. Uh, and, and a lot of times you're only going to have one kit, you know, it, it, but in this particular case, we went through a workflow that created three kits for my father uh, using the missing parent tool. Uh, first, the part that I got from him. Second, the part that my brother got from him. Then we merged them together. So let's use that merged 71% reconstruction of my father, uh, which is the most complete version I have for him right now, as our child kit. On the next screen, it's going to ask us, to select the target parent donor profile. And I haven't created one yet for my grandmother on, on, on this account. This is my demo account. So let's do that now. Helen Eloise Frudenberg. And gender is female. If we wanted, we could add a picture of her here. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now because I already have a you know complete donor profile set up for her in my personal account. Um, but maybe I'll add a nice picture. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll link that profile in the back end or something. Okay. Anyway, um, they want her birth year. I don't remember exactly when that is off the top of my head, but I'm going to guess it was in the 20s. Uh, death year in the 90s. Um, and you got to put the death year because that's how it knows to make the uh, donor profile public or private. And if there's no privacy issue, like in this case, we want it to show up in people's match lists so that they could say, oh, I match, you know, uh, Helen Frudenberg that was born in whatever year she was born. I, I should know, but I don't. Um, and they could, you know, look her up and say the 1930 census in this case and do some research. Uh, okay. And they don't have to bother you with messages. Uh, that's one of the nice things about this, too. I mean, you can keep your tree private if you want, but you make some nice profiles for your ancestors, and people match them, and they could just look them up. Okay, so continue. And here are her matches. Um, and you see my brother here. Uh, I'm sorry, these aren't her matches. These are my father's matches. This is from the kit I created last time, and he matches my brother. And we're not going to select him because that's not a only paternal match. Uh, my brother obviously inherited some DNA from, you know, my paternal grandfather as well. I mean, he, so he's a relative on both sides with relative to my father, uh, as am I, so I'm not going to choose myself. Uh, these are kits I've already created for my grandmother in my personal account, and we're not going to choose them either because uh, that's kind of circular logic. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how the tool really works. Uh, so let's just pick a couple here from, uh, here is my dad's half brother, uh, and he is, they share the same mother, so that's appropriate for this tool. Um, this one here I happen to know is my cousin Richard's, my dad's, my dad's, uh, maternal first cousin Richard's, uh, Borland Genetics, uh, uh, what is it, the Humpty Dumpty kit that we're the, that's where he's merged his uh, kits from different sites. Um, and that's enough for now. You could add as many as you wanted in here, and you could choose reconstructed kits from the list. You could, you know, that's why they're on the list. Uh, but I'm just going to choose a few because the, the more kits that you add, uh, the more time it takes to run this tool right now. I am eventually going to have a subscription version of this tool and the dark side tool. And what's going to be different about it is they're going to use uh, cloud computing uh, to, to calculate the results basically instantly. Uh, but the reason I have to make those subscription is because when, when I'm using cloud computing to do massive amounts of you know, mathematics very quickly, uh, I've got to pay for uh, additional uh, server time for that. So uh, the free version will always be there, though, but you just, you, there'll be a limit to the, the number of kits you can choose will be limited by the amount of uh, time it takes to process them, because I guess the uh, tool will time out if you pick like 100 kits or something like that, um, the free version of the tool. All right, so that's good enough for now. Um, now let's go here and click Continue, and it tells us to wait 15 minutes, and that is the maximum timeout time. Um, I don't think it's going to take 15 minutes to create a, a kit using just uh, two. Well, it can't, uh, because if it took 15 minutes, it would time out. Um, so let's just wait a minute or so and see how long it actually takes when we choose two donors. Okay, uh, back to the resource manager widget. So here we are, we have her kit here, 
and we can see the re reconstruction coverage is actually 25%, which is pretty good considering uh, uh, the, the the what we had for input. Um, so if my father's kit was a 71% reconstruction, uh, you know the maximum in theory that we could even get out of that kit is probably about 36%, and we, we scored a 25% just using two relatives from the list, and that's because my Uncle Michael is so closely related, and so is uh, my father's cousin Richard. Uh, they should just, they, they share a lot of uh, DNA. Okay, so um, now if we wanted to, we can go to edit her profile, and here's where we put in, for example, that she's from Jersey City, New Jersey, you know, whoops, I could be more specific than that if I wanted to. If I wanted to put in the birth uh, month, day, year, if I wanted to change the privacy, you could see it made it default to public because she is deceased, um, but I'm fine with that. Um, uh, it'll tell you her associated kits here, and I'll probably have a separate tutorial for all the things that are on this screen, but I don't think I have that uh, uploaded to YouTube yet. Okay, um, well that's it for this episode. I mean, what's going to happen with this kit is it's going to process just like any other kit on the Borland Genetics site, and we're going to be able to look at her matches, and you know, it's not just going to be Michael and Richard and my father, it's going to be you know, all the people that match on all those segments that we aggregated here in our kit here, and it's this is this will represent you know 25% of the DNA of my grandmother who, you know, died quite a long time before the uh, the emergence of uh, autosomal DNA testing. So you could see that this is this could be a very powerful tool for uh, genealogy. Okay, uh, see you next time.